One more light, worshipful master. Uh, on? It is a little bit or all off. What do you make? Perhaps, perhaps one more off or all off. Or all no, off. They're, they're, so it's either them or none. none. Ooh, okay, okay. Is okay. okay. that better? Yeah. All right, brethren, I'll pass you over to Brother uh, Clove Corn. Thank you, Worshipful Master, uh, and welcome to my uh, lecture on the Clovercorn Global Freemasons Survey, and thank you all for attending. Uh, first of all, who is Annie Clovercorn? Just a quick uh, introduction to who I am, in case you're not aware of uh, who I am. I've been a Freemason for uh, 20 years, over 20 years, initiated into Lodge Concordia 226, author of the 99 Degrees of Freemasonry, it's one of, one of uh, several books that I've written, it's in the third edition. And uh, I've been in various orders and jurisdictions, and I'm the current Deputy Director of Community Relations of the Grand Lodge of Ancient Free and Accepted Masons of South Australia and the Northern Territory. But the lecture I'm giving, or any lecture I give, of course, uh, is not uh, as a representative of that, of that Grand Lodge or any other body. Uh, these are my own personal opinions. Uh, and I was invited to present this lecture, of course, by the Worshipful Master of Glenelg Lodge, Worshipful Brother Mark Bates. And uh, let me tell you, brethren, um, your Worshipful Master is a very active Freemason. Uh, it, it seems that wherever I am uh, and wherever I go, whether it's the Remembrance Day March on North Terrace or History Week at Grand Lodge, uh, your Worshipful Master is there behind the scenes or leading from the front. So uh, my great respect and acknowledgement to... Uh, Worshipful Brother Bates. What is the Clovercorn Freemason Survey? Um, you may not have heard of it, um, but it is a global survey of Freemasons, and I commenced it in 2016. It's linked to research of, of the book I've written, The 99 Degrees of Freemasonry, and it's powered by SurveyMonkey. I think it will be of some interest to you. Uh, the aims of the survey we're to understand the key synergies and differences between Masonic lodges throughout the world. That was one of the aims. Another one was to provide benchmarking data to compare membership trends between jurisdictions. We should all be interested in benchmarking between the jurisdictions, particularly in the area of membership growth and retention, to identify major barriers and, and, and drivers to growth and to see viewpoints on cultural drivers and issues. Um, I used a number of uh, mechanisms to um, perpetuate and promote the survey on web pages I run and other places. It's very much a private activity. What does it look like? It's an online survey. It's instantaneous, it's interactive, and it's global. So you basically go online and you tick corresponding questions. It's very easy to do. I had 1,047 brethren take part in the survey. Uh, and from all sorts of different places uh, from around the world. And you're probably wondering, is that large, is that small? The Clovercorn Global Freemason Survey uh, is roughly in line with something like the Australian National University Social Survey in, of 2015. Look, at the uh, 2016 Office of the Federal Safety Commissioner. Uh, they do yearly audits of about 225 companies. And then recently, the uh, Morgan Poll, it was a political poll, um, uh, game on, Easter it, it was called, and that had a survey size, size of about 707. So 1,047 is a reasonably sized survey so that we can get uh, some confidence about these numbers. As these questions are accumulated automatically using SurveyMonkey, uh, it spawns these, these graphs. I won't go through all of them, but um, the majority of respondents were in the regular jurisdictions of Freemasonry. That's very important to know. Obviously, the majority were male Freemasons, and some female Freemasons or irregular Masons 
at least from the perspective of our, of our jurisdictions, uh, were involved, which is interesting. Um, and um, the, the standard age group was between 36 and 55, which I think is a, is a very good, healthy uh, target age group for the survey. A key question in the survey was, what attracted you to Freemasonry and why uh, did you join the fraternity? And the number one response in the Clovercorn Freemason survey undertaken by these 1,047 participants was, it's mysteries and knowledge. It's mysteries and knowledge. People come for our mysteries. Um, the global fraternity, networking. The fact that we're global was a point of attraction and interest. The opportunity to work on meaningful projects, at least they thought that's something that they would do. Uh, and probably the fourth on the list there was learning uh, and presenting the Freemasons ritual. They had some interest in that, about 35%. But the vast majority, 76%, were interested in the mysteries of Freemasonry. Since joining, and this is a key question, isn't it? I think every organisation asks this question of its members, whether it's be in football or whatever it might be. What are you most disappointed about, in this particular case, in Freemasonry? And the number one was, this is interesting, not enough mystery. Uh, so they come for the mystery, and many of them felt that that mystery or that element of mystery perhaps was lacking. Uh, not enough relevance in society, so there was a question of relevance. And interestingly, not enough work on meaningful projects was the third factor as to why they left Lodge. Why have you not, or might you not, invite your friends to join Freemasonry? It's a key question. And uh, this was a little bit more spread. The results were more spread out. Too much inward focus. Too much focus on ritual and ceremony. Not enough tangible projects applying our ideals outside of Lodge. <coughs> I, I, I really agree with that one. I think we should do more there. Um, Maslow's hierarchy of human needs, you may, be uh, you may be familiar with it, hopefully you are, suggests that people are more likely to support an organisation if that organisation is involved in securing or furthering their profession or which fosters a tangible benefit. Now, there may be moral argument, because of course in Freemasonry we, we point out that you shouldn't join for, a, for that type of benefit. But nonetheless, people essentially said that um, they were interested um, in undertaking more leadership training within Freemasonry, um, perhaps introducing some business networking programs, so not a direct benefit, but perhaps a networking benefit, um, and further engaging in other international orders to give the fraternity a more global purpose, 56%. So that was uh, the third point of interest for the respondents. Then I asked a number of key questions, I won't go through all of them, and I asked them to, to, to rate do they extremely agree or disagree with a particular concept? Um, one uh, question, do, do you think we should accept um, women in Freemasonry, in our jurisdiction of Freemasonry? Uh, and 18% agreed and about 40% extremely disagreed. This is interesting. Perhaps if we do the survey again in 10 years or in 20 years, those numbers might change. But it suggests that um, most of the members at the moment uh, we're, we're reasonably comfortable with the fact that we are a fraternity, not a sorority or a, or a mixed group, if you like. So as I close this short lecture, I want to draw some observations from the survey. 76%, that's a lot in any survey result, joined because they wanted to explore the Masonic mysteries. 35% joined to present ritual. Only 35% joined, I have to say this twice to get, to get the point across, to do the ritual and 55 of those said, hang on, that's what I spend most of my time on. Therefore, 65% or the majority stated that the number one disappointment is a lack of education in Masonic mysteries. Now, I'm not for one minute saying we should not do ritual. It's not what this is, I think, telling us. What this is telling us is, yes, we should, of course, continue to do our ceremonies and our rites and our ritual, but we should also be more involved in Masonic education. Um, they are interested in that. Some people think, nah, young people of the day, they're not interested in, in that sort of stuff. That's not what the survey says. 
40% are disappointed with a, perhaps a lack of purpose. Not enough meaningful projects. We can change that. And we are changing that, I should say, as well. Grand Lodge is putting a lot of effort uh, in, uh, this in this jurisdiction in changing the face and outward engagement activities with the public. And there'll be some more exciting news uh, about that as we venture forth into this year. 57% um, state Freemasonry should network more with other global Masonic bodies. I think that's a great idea. 54% state more charity efforts should be focused within Freemasonry. 80%, um, the strongest response in the survey said that Freemasonry should be open to all religions. And 20% of respondents joined because of our external charity efforts. It's an interesting um, response question. So our last slide of this particular uh, survey, if the Masonic mysteries are the primary driver behind membership, are we investing enough in this as a differentiator in our organisation? If Masonic education is another primary driver and the number one reason for resignations, are we focusing enough on education? Is the focus, the focus on ritual justifiable in consideration that only 35% of people are generally interested in that? Are we doing enough to connect with other Masonic orders worldwide? Are we? Do we ensure that charity starts at home within the organisation? So I'll leave you with those thoughts. And for this part of the lecture, thank you for your time. Just, just before you go on, yes. can we ask, I just had a question that yes. crossed my mind. Yes. Have you collated the information to see country by country, and if so, are, the, are those conclusions similar per country? A great question, because one should always be warned that statistics can be tricky and they can change with different cultures and viewpoints and jurisdictions, which is probably why, um, Mark, you're asking that question. No, I haven't. Right. And it, it would be interesting to do that. Um, uh, and, you know, perhaps if people are interested in this sort of survey, uh, perhaps more work can be done in, in this area of Masonic surveys. If we know what people are interested in, then perhaps we can amend slightly. Although I'm a traditionalist, I think we're fine as we are. We are a wonderful traditional fraternity with a very long and ancient history, and people are actually interested in what we do, uh, particularly with our Masonic mysteries. And I guess what this survey does show us is that um, people are interested in tradition. They're interested in, in what we offer. Uh, perhaps we just need to let them know that we're here uh, for them to, to spark that interest. That's it, all done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.